Imagine yourself in a city nestled between two enormous mirrored walls, stretching as far as the eye can see. Not just a home, it's a futuristic work of art. Now, maybe that sounds like an absurd fantasy to most people. Wake up, idiot! And if we're being honest here, it is. But in the mind of Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, it's very, very real. It's Neo, MBS's planned city of the future, which promises to blend sustainability, technology, and efficiency to produce urban environments unlike your wildest dreams. But MBS isn't the only man with grand plans to revolutionize how we live. Just a few years ago, tech billionaire Peter Thiel was hawking the concept of seasteading, building paradise cities on the ocean, free from intrusive and abusive government. Now, it might seem weird to compare these two, the crown prince and this titan of Silicon Valley, but the comparison is intriguing alarming, and reveals some vital lessons about the dangers of certain kinds of ambition. So just what is it that these guys want, and why is it dangerous? Neom. 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 It almost sounds like… But what is Neo, besides a gas-guzzling exhibition of testosterone? Well, it's the microstate of the future carved from Saudi Arabia's northwest corner right here. And it's got a few regions so far. In the mountains, you've got Trojana. It's basically the ski and party town of the future, like a Saudi Arabian Aspen or Davos. They know their audience. Designed to be a mecca for music festivals and multimillionaires. On the coast, you've got Oxagon. Oxygen. Oxagon. The port of the future, featuring a revolutionary AI-powered harbor on the coastline while floating out on the water, that's right, will be a technology and research hub where the world's next big ideas will emerge, apparently, somehow. And over here, you've got the star of the show, The Line, a city, but in a straight line. 170 kilometers long, traversable end-to-end -end via underground rail in only 20 minutes with anything you could need within a five-minute walk, thanks to the Epcot-style network of subterranean tunnels full of robotic delivery vehicles. But that was crazy. For one, no high-speed rail that fast even exists. So they went back to the drawing board and came up with... The line. Same promises, including future train, except now the robots fly and there are 1,500 foot tall mirror finish walls along the entire length, for some reason. It's an improvement. That's the answer to what is NEO. But why is NEO? There are a few explanations based either on the marketing materials or on basic assumptions about what goes on in the mind of a 37-year-old man who's never worked a day in his life and is personally wealthier than God. Either MBS is worried about the environment, his petrostate's economic future, or it's all vanity. The first explanation is the most generous, and the one the PR team pushes. Zero carbon emissions. Energy and water supplies are 100% renewable and an Oceanographic Institute for pioneering marine research so we can best protect the pristine waters of the Red Sea and beyond. It goes on. But come on, this is Saudi Arabia we're talking about here. If there's one thing that always trumps the environment in Riyadh, it's the bottom line. And MBS should be concerned about the future of his oil-based economy. But it seems somewhat ludicrous that building a floating city a very long, very tall city, and an AI-powered ski resort is the smartest way to diversify and adapt. That leaves, you guessed it, vanity. And the shoe fits. The name Neom comes from Neo, meaning new, and M for Muhammad. Sorry, Muhammad bin Salman. According to leaked documents from consultants MBS hired, the location for Neom was picked from a glance at Google Earth, and the original plan for Neom involved an island of robot dinosaurs. Welcome to Neo. Yep, this is pure hubris, merely filtered through expensive consultants and PR experts. 
Okay, so Neom is a vanity project, but this kind of thing is only a problem for Petra Estates, where the price of telling the absolutist prince no is a swift sword to the neck, right? Right? Well, yes and no. Yes, because basically the whole point of liberal democracy is to offer the ambitious chances at political power and riches, while placing a strict cap on just how ambitious they can be. Think Mark Cuban, a guy who's made his billions, bought a sports team, and is content playing within the rules. Will you run for president one day? <laughs> yes. But no system is perfect. Mm -hmm. And one American found his way to an idea not at all unlike MBS's Oxygon. That's Peter Thiel, who co-founded PayPal with Elon Musk, invested early in Facebook, and started a bunch of companies named after stuff from Lord of the Rings, including some evil stuff, like Palantir. We do not know who else may be watching. <laughs> In the late 2000s, he was a big fan of seasteading. The question of whether seasteading is desirable or possible, in my mind, is, is not even relevant. It is absolutely necessary. Why build cities on the ocean, you ask? Well, back then, Thiel was a libertarian and a skeptic of democracy, who thought welfare spending and women voting made freedom incompatible with democracy. But if you could found a city outside of the greedy modern state, Thiel thought, Humanity could achieve new heights of liberty and innovation. Unfortunately for Thiel, however, his Bioshock-esque libertarian utopia failed to materialize. You see, building cities in the middle of the ocean is actually really difficult, really expensive, and all around a bad idea. And like Neom, it was an exercise in vanity, supposedly aimed at economic efficiency, but in reality, the product of unlimited ambition. With the failure of seasteading, Thiel underwent a crucial epiphany. If the state couldn't be avoided, Thiel would have to gain control of it. But what to do with that power? You would think Thiel might use it as a libertarian, downsizing government and deregulating the economy. But Thiel's outlook changed. Motivated by the same core idea that fueled his skepticism of democracy before, that the masses couldn't be trusted, he's aligned himself with national conservatism, a movement not unlike Viktor Orban's agenda covered in the last video, using policy to promote traditional family values, curb LGBT rights, punish overly woke corporations, and slash immigration. As with Viktor Orban's implementation in Hungary, national conservatism involves curtailing democracy, given its limited popularity and paternalistic attitude that leaders must save the people from themselves. Thiel has funded the movement lavishly. In Ohio and Arizona, he bankrolled Senate candidates and former employees, J.D. Vance and Blake Masters, with $25 million, as they declared their belief that the 2020 election was stolen. In essence, Thiel wants to be some kind of great founding figure, and he now sees his best shot in attaching himself to the movement which sought to overturn the last election and wouldn't mind overturning American democracy more broadly. Ambition is typically thought of as a lust for power, but both these men want more than power. After all, between the crown prince and billionaire, they already have plenty. They want to be remembered, to live forever. It's no coincidence Neom is named after MBS, nor is it a coincidence that Thiel has spent millions funding anti-aging research and signed himself up to be frozen when he dies in hopes that in the future he might be reanimated. For Neom's part, it's unlikely MBS will find what he craves. Like seasteading, building such grandiose structures in the desert is a battle of man versus nature in which there's little chance of prevailing. But Thiel's new ambitions, his anti-democratic attempts to position himself as the patron of a future Caesar, may well succeed, as Viktor Orban has, because Thiel's is a battle of man versus man. Liberal democracy places a limit on ambition, and that's a thing we should be thankful for. But 
that limit is only as strong as the people who support it. And if men as powerful as Teal commit themselves fully to breaking it, it's unclear how well or how long it will hold. Thank you for watching. We hope you learned something from this important story. If you'd like to support our efforts at sharing stories that matter to democracy, please leave a like, subscribe for more, share this video, and leave a comment letting us know what you think.